selection of bearing materials for engineering purpose okay what is the importance of uh, bearing selection bearing material selection the selection of a proper material for engineering purposes is one of the most difficult problem for a designer okay the best material is one which serve the desired objective at the minimum cost okay and the following factors should be considered while selecting the material okay now the following factors should be considered while selecting the bearing material first one is uh, availability of the material okay availability of the uh, raw material raw material for making the bearings and the suitability of the materi materials for the working conditions in service working conditions means uh, surrounding atmospheric conditions uh, and thermal conditions okay these are very important for uh, selection of bearings and also the another important one is uh, cost cost of the raw materials okay these three these three factors affecting the selection of bearing materials so okay, materials used for bearings the materials commonly used for bearings are bobbit material bronzes cast iron silver non metallic bearings in previous class already already i have explained about these uh, five types okay so bobbit materials uh, bobbit metals uh, mainly classified into tin based bobbits and lead based bobbits okay and uh, bronzes are also classified into phosphor bronzes and uh, other one and the cast iron cast iron is a cast iron is a hard hardened material so so another one is the silver it is more expensive but uh, these silver bearings are used in aircraft engines and non metallic bearings uh, further classified into wood bearings wood material okay plastic material nylon and teflon materials okay and carbon graphite materials okay these are the examples for non metallic bearings in previous class already we have discussed about these five topics okay in this session i will explain what are the important material properties okay in this session i will explain about material properties now material properties uh, the knowledge of materials and their properties is of uh, great significance for a design engineer okay the machine elements uh, should be made of uh, such a material which has the properties suitable for the conditions of operation in addition to this a design engineer must be familiar with the effects which the manufacturing process and the heat treatment have on the properties of the material okay and another one is in this class we shall discuss the commonly used engineering materials and their uh, properties in mission design okay okay the mechanical properties of the metals are those which are associated with the ability of a the material to resist mechanical forces and loads okay now first one is uh, bearing material should have high compressive strength and uh, 
and bearing materials also should have high fatty strength and uh, good conformability and good embeddability and good bondability property and sixth one is the high corrosion resistance seventh one is high thermal conductivity eighth one is low thermal expansion these eight properties i will explain in this session okay uh, for each and every bearing materials should have should have high compressive strength high fatigue strength good conformability good embeddability good bondability high corrosion resistance high thermal conductivity and low thermal expansion okay now coming to the first property that is the high compressive strength okay what is the meaning of strength first of all you have to know the, the fundamental about strength the definition of strength is the ability of a material to resist the externally applied forces without breaking or yielding is called strength okay the ability of a material to resist the externally applied forces without breaking or yielding is called strength okay whereas the ability of a material to resist the externally applied compressive forces without breaking without breaking or yielding is called compressive strength okay here here yeah, compressive loads or compressive forces are acting on the bearing so here yeah, the ability of a material to resist the externally applied compressive forces compressive forces without breaking or yielding is called compressive strength so uh, bearing so bearing uh, materials should have high compressive strength okay the maximum bearing pressure is considerably greater than the average pressure okay now the man the therefore the bearing material should have high compressive strength to withstand this maximum pressure so as to prevent extrusion or other permanent deformation okay so uh, for example this is the application of a bearing in locomotive engine okay locomotive engine means uh, train trains wagons railway wagons uh, here yeah. this is a wheel okay locomotive wheel for a free rotation of a axle axle and wheel we are using a bearing here here we are using a bearing okay so here the load of a this wagon the load of this wagon acted on acting on axle okay and uh, that load transferred into bearing okay so the total load of a wagon or trains uh, acting on bearings so uh, for to to overcome the failure okay to avoid the failures the bearings uh, should have high compressive strength because uh, the type of load acting on this bearing is compressive load okay so bearings should have high compressive strength this is also another example uh, this is the application of a bearing in uh, aircraft okay this is a landing wheels here for supporting this axle we are using a bearing here here we are using a bearing so here also the total load of a, a aircraft the total load of a aircraft acts on this axle okay ok 
okay that load transferred to bearings okay here one bearing is used and this side also we are using another bearing so the total load of a aircraft acts on this bearings so uh, bearings should uh, should maintain that load without uh, cracks and without failure so in that case also a compressive load is acting on that bearing so bearings here also bearings should have high compressive strength to overcome the failures okay and another property is uh, bearing should have high fatigue strength first of all what is fatigue what is fatigue strength when a material is subjected to repeated stresses okay repeated stresses it fails at uh, stresses below the yield point stresses okay below the yield point stresses such type of failure of a material is known as fatigue okay so when a material is subjected to repeated loads okay repeated stresses are repeated loads okay when a material is subjected to repeated loads or repeated stresses it fails at stresses below the the yield point stresses okay yield point uh, yield point strength is the maximum capacity of a capacity of a component okay before that uh, capacity the bearings may fail due to this repeated stresses okay such type of repeated stresses uh, are called fluctuating loads or fluctuating stresses such type of uh, failure of a material is known as uh, fatigue okay and the failure is uh, caused by means of a progressive crack progressive crack formation which are usually fine and of microscopic size okay here the failure is caused by means of progressive crack progressive crack formation which are usually fine and, uh, and of microscopic size okay this property is uh, considered in design of uh, shafts okay fatigue uh, strength property is considered in the design of shafts connecting rods springs gears and bearings also okay so the bearing material should have sufficient fatigue strength okay should have sufficient fatigue strength so that it can withstand repeated loads okay so that it can withstand repeated loads without developing surface fatigue cracks okay so bearing materials should have high fatigue strength to withstand repeated loads okay repeated loads are repeated stresses okay it is of major importance in aircraft and automotive engines okay this is the another example for uh, application of a bearing this is a crankshaft okay this crankshaft uh, used in uh, ic engines internal combustion engines here this uh, for supporting uh, this uh, crankshaft we are using uh, bearings supporting bearings here here one bearing is used and here also one bearing is used so for supporting uh, the this crankshaft we are using we are using a bearings okay here in on crankshaft repeated loads are acting on crankshaft so to withstand that uh, repeated loads this uh, bearing materials should have high fatigue strength and another property is uh, good conformability okay when when a part is subjected to constant stress okay constant stress at high temperature for a long period of time okay 
at high temperatures for a long period of time, it will undergo a slow and permanent deformation called creep. Okay, called creep. So this property is considered in designing internal combustion engines, boilers, and turbines. Okay, so so conformability is the ability of the bearing material to accommodate shaft deflections, bearing inaccuracies by the plastic deformation or creep. Plastic deformation or creep without excessive excessive wear and heating okay conformability property is useful to identify the the creep strength for internal combustion engines uh, boilers and turbines in internal combustion engines uh, boilers turbines we are using uh, bearings here this is a internal combustion engine okay this, uh, in in this internal combustion engine we are using bearings okay so uh, here the temperature is uh, more than uh, 1000 degrees so to withstand that temperatures bearing metals uh, should have high conformability and high creep strength okay this is the example for uh, creep property and another property is uh, good embeddability so bearing materials should have good embeddability. It is the ability of a bearing material to accommodate, okay, to accommodate or embed small particles, small particles of dust, small particles of dust, grit, like this, without scoring the material of the journal. Okay. Journal means uh, shaft, rotating member. Okay. And uh, bearing materials also should have good bondability. Okay. So many high capacity bearings are uh, made by bonding. Made by bonding one or more thin, thin layers of a bearing material. Okay. Bearing material to a high strength steel shell. Thus, the strength of the bond, that is the bondability, is an important consideration. In selecting in selecting bearing material, so uh, good so bondability also very important for bearing materials. And another one is high corrosion resistance. So bearing materials should have high corrosion resistance because the bearing material should not corrode away under the action of lubricating oil. Okay. This property is of a particular, particular, particular importance in internal combustion engines. Yeah, this is the example for uh, bearings. Here, for this mission, we are using bearings at uh, wheels. Okay. For smooth running of uh, these wheels, we are using high capacity bearings to withstand the high compressive loads and high corrosion resistance. Okay, so we are using good bearing materials. Uh, another one is high thermal conductivity. Conduction. Conduction means. Uh, Conduction means transfer, transfer from one surface to another surface. Here, thermal, thermal means heat. Okay, thermal conductivity, thermal conductivity means transfer of uh, heat from one surface to another surface. Okay, so conduction uh, always we have to we have to consider in uh, solid surfaces only. Okay, so. Uh, bearing materials should have high thermal conduction. That means uh, bearing materials should be of high thermal conductivity so as to permit the rapid removal of heat. Okay, rap rapid removal of heat generated by the friction. So, in bearings, friction uh, due to friction, heat is generated. 
so that heat we have to dissipate okay dissipate to surroundings so bearing metals should have high thermal conductivity property to cool the bearing surfaces and last one is uh, bearing materials should have low thermal expansion so the bearing material should be of low coefficient of thermal expansion so that when the bearing operates over a wide range of temperature there is no undue under change in the clearance okay so thermal expansion thermal uh, thermal means also heat expansion means enlargement enlarging in a uh, bearing material so due to high temperatures due to high temperatures uh, in bearing surfaces uh, bearings may expand bearings may expand due to high temperatures so to overcome that failure bearing materials should have low thermal expansion property now coming to the another topic that is the types of lubricants and also importance of lubricant what is the importance of lubricant in bearings okay the lubricants are used in bearing to reduce the friction between the two rubbing surfaces Okay, two rubbing surfaces and to carry away the heat generated by the friction. So here, this is example for uh, for friction. Here I consider two rub two rubbing surfaces. These two surfaces are rough. Okay, so this is a boundary lubrication system. This is a mixed lubrication system. This is a hydraulic lubrication system. in this uh, in this three cases okay lubricant is used to overcome the friction okay so lubricants are used in bearings to reduce friction to reduce friction between the two rubbing surfaces okay and to carry away the heat generated by friction okay it also protects the bearing against corrosion okay lubricants protects the bearing protects the bearings against corrosion okay this is the another important now types of lubricants all lubricants are classified into the following uh, three groups there is uh, liquid lubricants semi liquid lubricants and solid lubricants okay so lubricants are classified into liquid lubricants semi liquid lubricants and solid lubricants the liquid lubricants usually used in bearings are mineral oils okay here in in liquid lubricants uh we are using mineral oils okay mineral oils and synthetic oils okay these are in liquid liquid state okay so liquid lubricants uh, used in bearing are mineral oils and synthetic oils the mineral oils are most commonly used because of their cheapness and stability okay so mineral oils are very cheap and high stability so we are using mineral oils the liquid lubricants are usually preferred where they may be refined okay and another one is uh, semi liquid lubricants grease all of you know about a uh, grease so a grease is a semi liquid lubricant okay it is in semi liquid state so a grease is the best example for semi liquid lubricants so these semi liquid lubricants having high viscosity 
high viscosity than liquid lubricants okay so semi liquid lubricants having high viscosity than liquid lubricants so these greases are employed where slow speed slow slow speed and heavy pressure exit okay and where oil drip from the bearing is undesirable okay it is the application of uh, grease and another type is uh, solid lubricants okay solid lubricants are useful in reducing friction reducing friction where oil films oil films cannot be maintained because of high pressures and temperatures okay so they should be softer than the materials being lubricated a carbon graphite carbon graphite material is used for a solid lubricants carbon graphite is the is the example best example for solid lubricants so these carbon graphite materials uh, there is no need to lubricate for the carbon graphite materials so these carbon graphite materials are widely used in food processing uh, industries now coming to the properties of lubricants first property is uh, viscosity okay in this session i i will explain about properties of lubricants okay in previous slide we have discussed about types of lubricants liquid semi liquid solid lubricants okay in this slide we will i will explain about properties properties of lubricants okay first property is viscosity second property is oiliness third one is density fourth one is the viscosity index and the fifth one is the flash point sixth point sixth one is the five point seventh one is four point four point or freezing point okay these are the important uh, lubricant properties okay in previous slide we have discussed about uh, high fatic strength high compression strength the, those are uh, related to bearing material properties but here i am explaining about uh, properties lubricant properties okay these are under lubricant properties so first one is viscosity viscosity is uh, is a very important property for uh, lubricants now viscosity is a measure of degree of fluidity degree of fluidity of a liquid okay viscosity is a measure of degree of fluidity of a liquid it is a physical property by which of which an oil is able to form retain and offer resistance to shearing a buffer film under heat and pressure okay the greater the greater the heat and pressure the great viscosity is required of a of a lubricant to prevent uh, thinning and uh, squeezing out of the film this is the example for uh, viscosity now here i am using uh, two rubbing surfaces uh, top one is uh, moving surfaces the moving surface that is uh, i consider this moving surface as a sharp surface and this bottom surface i consider this surface as a fixed surface this surface is a, is a bearing surface bearing inner surface between these two surfaces i am using a lubricant okay these are uh, liquid lubricants or uh, semi liquid lubricants okay this is the uh, height of a lubricant okay h is the height of a lubricant here i am applying the force here i am applying a force p to rotate the to rotate this top surface with a velocity v okay v is the velocity of a uh, velocity of uh, motion okay
the fundamental meaning of viscosity may be understood by considering a flat a flat plate moving under a force p parallel to a stationary plate the two plates being separated by thin film of a fluid lubricant Okay, the the particles of the lubricant uh, here strongly to the moving and stationary plates. The motion is accompanied by linear slip or shear between the particles throughout the entire height h h of the film thickness. If a is the area of the plate in contact with the lubricant, then the unit shear stress is given by tau equal to p by a. Here tau is the shear stress. P is the load, load acting on the surface plate divided by A. Capital A is the area, area of contact. Now, now another property is uh, oilness. Oilness is the joint property of the lubricant on the bearing surfaces. In contact, okay, it is a measure of the lubricating qualities under boundary conditions. Under boundary conditions, where base metal to metal is prevented only by absorbed film. This is no absolute measure of oilness. And uh, another important property is uh, density. The this density property has no relation to lubricating value. But is but is useful in uh, changing the kinematic viscosity, kinematic viscosity to absolute viscosity. Mathematically, the relation between uh, density and viscosity is uh, the absolute viscosity equal to density into kinematic viscosity. Here, rho is the symbol for density, and kinematic viscosity. Here, absolute viscosity equal to density into kinematic viscosity. Uh, here rho is the density of the lubricating oil and fourth one is the viscosity index the term viscosity index is used to denote the degree of variation of viscosity with temperature okay Now another one is a flash point. It is the lowest temperature at which an oil gives off sufficient vapor to support a momentary flash without actually setting fire to the oil. When a flame is uh, when a flame is brought within six mm at the surface of oil. And another one is uh, fire point. It is the temperature at which an oil gives off sufficient vapor to burn it continuously when ignited. Okay. And last one is a pour point, pour point or a freezing point. It is the temperature at which an oil will cease, will cease to flow when cooled. Okay. Okay, friends. Thank you. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow I will explain about uh, bearing classification of bearing. Okay. So in next class, I will explain different types of uh, bearings. Okay. Okay. Thank you.